reconnect and heal today. Welcome to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Hello again and welcome to Love Never Dies Radio on the Dream Vision 7 Radio Network in 136 countries. And we're also simulcasting on YouTube. And we are recording the TV show for Binge Networks. The show is Dr. Turndorf, Turn On The Love. So I feel like saying, hurry, hurry nurse, I'm worse. Because pain, pain, we're talking about pain. Why won't your pain go away? A very fitting topic since I had a massage on Sunday that went wrong. She wailed on my butt and I've been in pain ever since. So I think that's very synchronistic, pain. We all know that when we feel pain, it's a sign that our body is trying to heal from some kind of assault or an injury. But what if the healing process doesn't happen the way it should? What if the pain keeps hanging on? Pain is a sign of inflammation, right? And it can happen in many parts of the body, depending on what has been most under stress, like your bladder, your uterus, your back, my joints, lungs, head, heart, flesh wounds, tennis elbow, or repetitive stress injuries. So today we're going to unravel the process of what happens with the immune system when the body is under attack and inflammation is triggered. And this can be short term after an abrupt injury, or it can be a slow smoldering kind of inflammation that just keeps hanging on. How does the body eventually heal an injury? What happens if the body keeps trying and keeps revving, but the healing isn't quite enough? What if the symptoms of pain and inflammation drag on and become chronic? Now we all know prolonged use of opioid medication is addictive and can cause debilitating side effects like nausea, reflux, constipation, irritable bowel syndrome, itchiness, liver damage, and of course, magnesium depletion. So what natural remedies can you use to help your healing along? I want to introduce you again to Sandy Sanderson. She's the founder and she's the CEO of Electromagnesium Skin and Muscle Care Products. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree with a specialty in marketing and business. And after years of her own chronic stress and deadlines, she developed severe heart arrhythmias and a health crisis, which she resolved with transdermal magnesium. And this led her to the development of a natural magnesium delivery system with products for all ages. So without further ado, Sandy, welcome back. Hello, thank you for having me. I love having you. We're going to talk today about better natural ways to manage pain and inflammation, ways that aren't going to get you addicted and create further health problems. So what would you like to say? Well, um, I think pain is a big issue. And as you mentioned, we have an opioid crisis um, and it's, uh, opioids are very, very addictive. Uh, even though it might get you over a pain threshold for a while, um, people can become dependent on them. And over time, that can hurt your liver and cause many uh, more serious side effects. So we're looking at what kind of things uh, people can do as an alternative. And there are a number of uh, natural ways to deal with pain. And for thousands of years, humanity has been using essential oils and herbs. Um, but we're going to talk today more about the effect of magnesium on pain relief. And there's a long history of research um, going back, you know, to the last century on magnesium and pain relief. Um, and I think we should look first at what pain actually is and how we perceive pain. So um, is it all in your head? And the answer is yes. So that when you have something happen, if you, you know, bump your toe or step on something sharp, you have what's in the, um, the, the skin or the muscles, uh, little nerve cells called nociceptors. They pick up that there's been some damage. They send the message to the brain, um, uh, through the spinal cord and the brain then makes a decision or a judgment on well how serious is that injury or that thing that happened and it then uh, sends feelings of pain intensity relative to the context of what the brain perceives of how serious that injury is so the brain has to make lots of decisions on on how intense a pain it should make you feel. And so this mechanism is quite interesting for me because I've been watching a few Wim Hof videos 
And this is obviously how the yogis through meditation can manipulate that kind of pathway and mitigate the effects of pain or of painful activities. They can go through a lot more pain by changing the way the brain perceives uh, the, the, the injury or the thing that's going on that should be causing them some pain. Uh, so, of course, that's not for everyone or not everyone can do it. And it does require training, but it does show that everyone is capable of managing their pain better through <clears throat> mindfulness and the practice of meditation. Um, but sometimes we just so excited and so, so stressed and so, you know, wrung out with the pain that we've been dealing with for whatever reason. Pain itself depletes magnesium. And when your magnesium levels are lower, it's really much harder to use your mind, to use the mindfulness, so a bit like a catch-22 situation. Sometimes we have to address the physical nature of the body and just calm it down to then use that mindfulness a little bit better. So I like to use both um, techniques, um, both mindfulness and the addition of magnesium to the system. Because when your body is operating normally, and magnesium is at normal levels, uh, your body can deal with stress. Um, it, when the injury heals, let's say you stubbed your toe, stepped on something sharp, when it heals, the pain goes away. So <clears throat> that kind of pain is, um, is, uh, uh, is a very sharp pain usually. It's, you can pinpoint it straight away uh, and it's called somatic pain. But there's a different kind of pain called visceral pain, which is really much deeper inside. It's around the organs or the blood vessels. And that's a little bit more nebulous. You can't put your finger on one specific spot, but it can feel like a, a, a transient pain or a nebulous pain. And that's often associated with symptoms to do with fibromyalgia. Um, so a lot of rheumatism, uh, inflammatory conditions have that kind of pain as well. Just one sec, I wanna say this thing about fibromyalgia because I was doing research on fibromyalgia a couple of years ago. And I had thought originally, oh, it's inflammatory pain. And I found this research that said, fibromyalgia is not inflammatory at all. That it is more about how you're perceiving the signals, right? Along the, the neural pathways. And you yes, may so have inflammation like you do with arthritis. Yes, so there's uh, a few things happening there and researchers, are still not in agreement exactly of what causes fibromyalgia, but it's very, very real. So they suspect that it's something to do with um, the substance P, which accentuates all those feelings of pain in various parts of the body. And they found that uh, low levels of magnesium are associated with excess substance P. So when they increase the magnesium levels and they've done quite a lot of magnesium studies to do with fibromyalgia which apparently happens more to women than men generally their feelings of pain tend to dissipate so so it's a very good treatment method without any negative side effects um, so very very good also to help sleep because another big problem with fibromyalgia is difficulty sleeping then you're not refreshing and renewing um, and so that in, then increases stress. And the more stress you have, the more you perceive pain because there's a, there's a revolving door of increased stress causes you to lose excessive magnesium and low magnesium increases your intensity of pain or the perception actually, of pain. Did you see that research from um, in the book from fatigue to fantastic? They did a study of 19 year old men, all healthy, no problem. And for two weeks, they just poked them and nudged them out of REM sleep. And within two weeks, all of them had fibromyalgia. So the conclusion was that fibromyalgia is ultimately a sleep disorder. That you're not in deep sleep. It's a very interesting finding. Yeah, It does make a lot of sense. And of course, magnesium helps you sleep. So oh. there you go. There's your, yeah, there's your, um, it's, it's a negative feedback loop. Um, so sleep is extremely important. 
And, and the more stress we have, the harder it is to get to sleep. So it seems to me that everything, all our diseases of modern times are related to stress. We are exposed to a lot of environmental stress. Um, there's chemical stresses, you know, there might be drugs, medications, additives in the food supply that can cause allergic reactions. So lots of um, stimulants and uh, provocations to the body. And, you know, if your stress levels cause your immune system to dip, then you can get a pathogenic assault, you can catch bugs and, you know, you can get a disturbed microbiome, you can get symptoms of um, IBS. Um, and, and of course, in other inflammations uh, of the lung, you know, you can get colds and flu more easily when the immune system takes a dip. And it's usually after you've had a lot of stress. And, and so stress will trigger the HPA system. So the hypothalamic pituitary axis oh, is an axis. HPA, hippocampus pituitary the adrenal axis. axis. Yes. So, so when you're, when you perceive danger and you have to run away or fight your, your body uh, goes into high alert. So the brain, the adrenals pump out stress hormones, they pump out adrenaline and cortisol and the stress hormones move around the body and trigger the, um, um, cells to open up and and more calcium gets pushed into the calcium channels and magnesium comes out because magnesium is a relaxant but calcium is a tightener calcium pulls things together so for your muscles to get tense and to to move into fight or flight you've got to pull everything together and tighten it and and then you've got to run and so you have a spike in metabolism you're producing more energy um, the increased metabolism creates waste byproducts it creates acids reactive oxygen species so ros um, and these are free radicals the free radicals if they're allowed to hang around too long can cause damage and so then we need a lot of antioxidant support to rebalance everything bring the ph to neutral and help the body recover again and magnesium helps us do that recovery the recovery phase is very very dependent on having enough magnesium if you don't have enough magnesium it's very difficult to get back to recovery there's always this like background stress you never really feel fully recovered or fully there uh, or fully relaxed um, and so the body can go into hyperdrive and become then hyper vigilant and primed for a stress response. So the lower the magnesium, the more easily triggered we can become. And it, it can be like a little hair trigger, something really small that can set you off when magnesium- I don't know why you're off. saying that, Sandy, <laughs> like that. <laughs> Just the smallest thing, thin skin. Yeah. And so that, that then makes us perceive pain more intensely as well, because it's this, this priming of the immune system, priming of that adrenal axis. And, um, and then we've got an oversupply of calcium. And then when that starts to dominate the magnesium, we, we, we can get quite locked up and the system becomes tense. The vascular system, so your, your blood vessels, your muscles, everything starts to squeeze and the vessels squeeze, the smooth muscles on the lining of your arteries can squeeze, that causes high blood pressure. And, and when everything is squeezing, of course, it can hurt and cause more pain. So then you have another negative feedback loop because of the pressure that's building up in the body because it's not got enough magnesium. But I need to say here, this magnesium intervention is so important because people will say, relax, meditate, deep breathe, sound healing. But this is like saying to somebody who has PMS and is all chemically imbalanced, just calm down. You can't, no matter what you say to yourself, no matter how much you deep breathe, if you don't fix the chemical imbalance, that is we're talking about the low magnesium, all those, like you said before, all those interventions are just like peeing in the ocean. They just don't do it. Yes, it's very, very major. Uh, so, um, so scientists postulate that, so they observe all the time that magnesium has these powerful effects on the nervous system, the central nervous system, our perception of pain, 
and the process of healing and recovery. So we heal from injuries faster when there's plenty of magnesium available. So magnesium do doesn't only treat the symptom, but it treats the cause as well. Exactly. And so they're, they're speculating, well, what, what is the underlying effect or what's magnesium actually doing to help mitigate that pain? And so they suspect that it uh, helps dampen down the N N methyl D aspartate receptor, so NMDA, which um, as that's activated, our perception of pain is increased or intensified. And we that that receptor is used because we need the messages to tell us, oh, that's a serious thing. Pay attention to that part of the body because that needs fixing. So it's a call to action. So you know, when we use painkillers to get rid of pain, when we're not dealing with the cause, that's actually a problem for the body because we can numb and dumb everything down, but then the problem keeps festering, seething, and not getting fixed. So you don't want to just numb it down and forget about what's happening because what's happening can turn into something worse. So it's a call to action by the brain telling you, you need to do something to fix me somewhere, wherever the pain is. So we, so we need uh, to, to do a number of things. We need to obviously fix the reason the pain's there. And then we need to do something to mitigate the intensity of the pain. Um, and magnesium is, it is absolutely awesome to do that. And then you can employ also more mind meditation techniques as well. Um, and they found, scientists have found magnesium is so good at helping to mitigate pain. They, they use it now in a, um, um, pre and post operative scenarios because they find it helps recovery better from operations. It really helps to mitigate post operative pain so that people don't become so dependent on opioids. And, and actually, most of the time where people are becoming dependent on legally prescribed opioids is usually connected with an operation of some kind, usually connected with some kind of surgery. And, the, and then they, they get onto the opioids and then they find they can't come off. You know, it's funny, Cindy, because um, in the new book, uh, if you think you don't have PTSD, think again. I'll be talking more about that because it's going to come out in a month. I have a whole chapter on the link between pain and PTSD, right? And people don't realize that there are actual diagnostic labels for trying to come off these opioids, you know, that the, the doctors get you addicted to the opioids and then try to get off and discontinuation syndrome. And then the problem is the drugs that they give people to get off the addictive opioids are addictive too. You know, so it, it's just a joke. It's a bad cycle. It's a bad cycle. So if, you know, you can do things to avoid it. I mean, there are people using in China, for instance, acupuncture quite successfully. I mean, I would be a little bit jittery about that, <laughs> but I mean, some cultures do it and it's quite okay and they don't feel the pain. I do, um, I do acupuncture, do it every week, have done for the last 25 years. You, you were thinking that you wouldn't have the nerve to put the needles in you. Is that what you were thinking? Oh, I mean, go through an operation. I've seen YouTubes where they're actually, oh, oh. Where they actually a surgeon working on them. <laughs> have, they use the hoku point here to yeah. cut into the brain. And they don't feel a thing. It's um, remarkable. Yeah. It's amazing. So that's a that's using those needles at certain points manipulates the signals from the nociceptors going to the brain. So so that is um, a, a, a successful anal analgesic um, that doesn't have any side effects. So there's another one. Um, but I think magnesium um, is very. Um, it has not been taken much enough notice of over the years. We, I feel we need to use a lot more of it in, in everything. So if you're preparing, if you know you have to have some kind of surgery, you, you really should be building your magnesium reserves up because most people tend to be deficient these days. We don't get enough from the food supply. Stress causes magnesium deficiency. If you're gonna have a surgery, then you may have been putting up with a lot of stress to fix that thing you're going to get, you know, operated on. And you may have been going through a lot of pain and pain itself is a massive stress, a massive impost on the body that will cause magnesium loss. So 
99% of the time people are deficient in magnesium and really need to be building that supply up. I had a friend, a close friend. She was only 50 at the time and she had been a dancer all her life and she had repetitive stress injury. So she needed a hip operation. Um, and, you know, the modern technology is fantastic these days. So it was a very, you know, small incision and everything was well done. The mechanical part of the surgeries was fantastic. Um, but what she did in the months leading up to the operation was she had a magnesium foot soak every night and she applied it on her skin all over transdermally and built up her magnesium supply as much as possible. And she went through the surgery and then post-operative, she did the same thing the, a couple of months after. I think it was two or three months afterwards, she had another appointment with the surgeon to check up on her. And she came into the surgery and he said, well, how are you going? How are your pain levels? He went through all the checklist. And she said, you know, I feel great. I felt um, I, I sailed through it. The pain wasn't too bad. I feel recovered so well. I can really move my body. And she, she actually did a high kick in front of him in his office. And he couldn't believe it. His mouth fell open. His jaw fell over. He couldn't believe. He said he's never had a patient recover so well from this surgery Ever and, and he was a um, very mature age surgeon. So um, she, she, there are many such cases. There is proof in the pudding that, uh, you know, magnesium really does help the body. And, and it's a very natural process. So fill up your tank. Your magnesium is okay. like a proof reserve tank. Pudding. Proof in the application. Let's proof, take yeah. a break, Sandy. We'll be back in a moment. It's Dr. J.B. Turndorf here. Are you feeling stressed, tense, jumpy, jittery, anxious, or having panic attacks or angry outbursts or disturbed sleep? Are you worried that you or someone you love is going to get sick or even die? Are you depressed and feeling hopeless like the world is coming to an end? Or are you suffering aches and pains or stiff muscles, low energy, or falling into self-damaging or addictive behaviors like binging on junk food, the internet, or TV, or abusing drugs or alcohol, or not eating right, or exercising, feeling like, what's the point? If you said yes to any of my questions, you are likely suffering what I call the global PTSD pandemic stress syndrome triggered by the coronavirus pandemic. Don't despair. My energetic system upgrade is your rescue remedy for the panic epidemic that is plaguing our world. The energetic system upgrade has already helped some of today's top leaders. Now you can experience your own energetic system upgrade healing transformation. To find out more and to schedule your session, visit drjamieturndorf.com slash energetic system upgrade. That's drjamieturndorf, T-U-R-N-D-O-R-F dot com slash energetic system upgrade. Love Never Dies is now on the Dream Vision 7 radio network every Wednesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. and 1 a.m. Eastern Time. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, also known as Dr. Love, is the number one international best-selling author of Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased. If you're grieving the loss of a loved one, tune in and find out how to reconnect and heal any unfinished business using Dr. Turndorf's groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique. Visit AskDrLove.com to find out more. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. You're listening to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. 
If you yearn to get along better with your life partner or spouse, friends, family members, and even co-workers, Dr. Turndorf's book, Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, Dr. Love's 10 Simple Steps to Cooling Conflict and Rekindling Your Relationship shows you how to turn conflict into connection for a lifetime of lasting love. Find out more about Kiss Your Fights Goodbye at AskDrLove.com. This is Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. This show is for you, the listener. Once again, here's Dr. Turndorf. Hello again, and welcome back to Love Never Dies on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network and Dr. Turndorf, Turn on the Love on Binge Networks TV. Sandy, you know, I was just thinking before we took the break, um, I, I cite this in uh, the, the book, if you think you don't have PTSD, think again. Columbia University reports that the mainstay of treatment for chronic pain is antidepressants. Did you know, did you, I mean, that is such an abomination because there is a pervasive belief in the medical community that among severe chronic pain patients, 94% had depression. So they think because people who have pain are depressed, the pain must be caused by the depression. And so they give them medication, depression. And of course, because more women than men suffer from chronic pain, then women have been told forever, oh, it's in your head, it's psychosomatic, you're depressed, you're anxious. So, and then this really blew my mind when I did further research for the book. The, um, the Mayo Clinic, has, has, talks about the somatic symptom disorder with predominant pain. And basically this is like throughout the medical community and the psychiatric community, they say that if you can't figure out the cause of the pain, you have a somatic symptom disorder. And basically they're putting it in uh, the psychological category, right? There's no condition that they can identify. So they say, basically you have this somatic symptom disorder and they give you antidepressants. But the thing is, the pain and the depression is caused by low magnesium, you know? Yes, yes. So remember, everything goes back to stress, stressful events, chronic stress or traumas. And so that causes magnesium to be dumped. And, you know, also for women, because you mentioned a little bit more sensitivity with women, women have more estrogen and you know, if they're on the pill or they're exposed to estrogenic compounds in the environment, in foods, don't yeah. have soy for that reason, that um, lifts the est estrogen in the body way too high. It puts your hormones out of balance and that makes us extra sensitive to pain. And it, and it also makes us more jumpy, more irritable. Um, and that's a sign of low magnesium as well. And so magnesium is used by the mitochondria to make ATP, so that's adenosine triphosphate, is that's our energy currency. So depression is nothing more than the energy levels of the brain dropping. It's depressed. The brain energy is depressed. That's good. Uh, so if you think about to be happy, you need a lot of energy to express joy, to express happiness, to feel like you want to jump up and down and jump out of your skin and you're so happy. That needs a lot of electricity. You've got to generate electricity, lots of it. And if there's not enough juice and not enough electrical juice, not enough magnesium to generate that electrical juice, you're on a suboptimal level. You're on computer safe mode. Things are kind of working, but they're not op operating at optimal best. So everything is sluggishly slow and it can translate to the gut the the um the uh, peristalsis it can make you constipated it can um make you t wired but tired so you really never get a refreshing sleep you're always trying to you're chasing your tail trying to rev and rev and rev you're needing your stimulants and your coffee and your whatever to try and lift that brain up and it's just not churning out the energy that you need when you fix the energy and you get enough sleep because during sleep you're using the magnesium to rebuild replace to clean out the mess so we've done a show on the on the sleep already and we've done a show on the microbiome which is also very dependent on that um, hpa system to be working properly 
um, it, because it goes out of whack as a result of stress as well. And it makes your neurotransmitters. So if the gut is not in balance, if you haven't got enough good microbes producing the neurotransmitters you need for the brain, then you're going to be in short supply of those balancing chemicals. So yeah, it is a chemical um, abnormality, but everything can be traced back to nutrition, especially magnesium, all the loss of it from excessive stress. Exactly, exactly, exactly. You know, it's interesting also that I'm sure you know, 15 to 35% of the patients with chronic pain also have PTSD. And you, we know that stress depletes magnesium and that triggers the HPA axis dysfunction and HPA axis dysfunction triggers PTSD. And then we know low magnesium triggers chronic pain. So our entire PTSD play world, plagued world now is soon gonna be suffering from chronic pain syndrome. It's gonna just be a massive epidemic if you don't already have chronic pain. Yes. So, and what happens with this constant revving or being primed for stress or very easily triggered is that your, you, your cells produce too many acids and acids dissolve us. They wear us down and they cause tissue damage. And wherever you have tissue damage, you've got calcium moving in because the body, you can use calcium as an alkalizing balancer. It's not enough magnesium. It goes pull calcium out of the bones, which can give you osteoporosis low magnesium triggers loss of calcium from bones, but that calcium can settle in the soft tissue and joints, which then make everything more stiff and crunchy and then can cause more irritation and pain. So it becomes a downward cycle unless you, you move in there and you stop that downward progression and you start to lift everything back up again. And so water and magnesium and a good healthy diet must go together to help you sleep better, to help you regenerate, to help you um, rebalance and, and uh, culture a good microbiome, to then produce your good neurotransmitters so your brain functions very well. So you see this network needs to work together and magnesium fuels it all. Exactly. You know, it's funny, this is very fitting. I had a patient just before we went on air and she said to me, that uh, she's having GERD, reflux. And also it started following the stress of a flood in one of her rental properties. So the stress produced the GERD and she said, funny, I've also developed asthma, a very bad asthma flare, which I think is really from her GERD. It's irritating her, um, lungs and exacerbating an underlying asthma condition. But so she said, I said, really your diet is bothering your stomach. You know, you're eating a lot of carbs. And she said, well, I'm craving carbs because my, you know, I'm, my mood is off. And so here we are, it's really her bowel, her microbiome, which then affects her uh, production of her neurotransmitters. So she's going at a symptomatic attempt, you know, uh, like, oh, well, I'll eat carbs and it temporarily raises your endorphins, your serotonin, your GABA, but then it hurts her stomach. So she's in a terrible, terrible loop. Once you're addicted to the carbs to try to mood regulate, you're in big trouble. So I was saying to her, just use the magnesium because it is the precursor to the neurotransmitters, the microbiome formulation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But the carbs taste better than putting my, you know, magnesium on your skin, right? So you know, you, I mean? you get used to. Um, I think it's just uh, retraining uh, habits because your body adapts to everything. So if you just make yourself have a disciplined diet for a while, you, your taste buds change and you get to like it. Then when you have something sweet, it's like, eh, oh, right? that's way too sweet. And so, so your body gets used to being healthy and eating healthy foods and, and it enjoys it. And when you feel good, you get a great feedback loop. You go, oh, I did that and I felt really good. So I'm going to do more of eat more fermented foods, more kefir, more, you know, yogurt and sauerkraut and those kind of things. So well, feeding your rhubarb. body. 
You love rhubarb to support Acromancia musinfilia. You love rhubarb along with the fermented sauerkraut. Yes, yes, because that helps to build the mucin lining of the gut, which houses our really good microbiome that help produce our neurotransmitters and the immune system sits in the lining of the gut. So you mentioned asthma before. That, that um, you know, there was a book written by Dr. Batman Gellich about um, water and the body's many cries for water. So he, like, he associated the development of asthma with, with a dehydration effect that the body is craving water or it can't hold the water that you're drinking. And so the, the lung sacs tend to close because they don't want to let the water out through the breath. Um, and um, so he, he was suggesting a mineral water, drink lots more mineral water, which will mitigate the effects of the, um, of the asthma attacks. And I have had many people come to me who've successfully been able to use magnesium transdermally or by infusion you know you put you um, put it in hot water and breathe it in through the steam or have a hot bath um, and they rub it on the chest or they and they obviously drink a lot of mineral water magnesium mineral water and and that helps um, relax the muscles the smooth muscles in the chest to open up so you're drinking more water, you're giving the body what it needs in, in terms of minerals and magnesium minerals and water, and you're relaxing the muscles because magnesium's going in there, pulling the calcium tightening effect away, relaxing those muscles and opening up to air again. And so you know, the, the, the airways are in spasm. So magnesium is such a central nervous system tranquilizer, spasms release, right? With the yes. Well, 12 years ago, I used a lot of magnesium very successfully to overcome my heart arrhythmias, which you mentioned before. And uh, every year I would go through a, a cold, you know, winter time. And I thought everyone had that experience and that was normal. But since I went through that first year of climbing up the slippery slope and refilling my magnesium reserve tanks, since that first year, I didn't have any more cold symptoms each year like I used to. So that's, again, associated with your immune system, taking a dip during stressful times, which is, you know, dealing with cold. And there's a lot more germs floating around. You get less sunshine, so less vitamin D, which... And also, Sandy, I'm thinking that there was this very famous naturopath, Philippine Keo, who talked about when you get a cold or a fever, it's the body's wisdom saying, I have to heat up in order to get rid of toxins. You know, that's how we dump stuff by getting a fever. So the magnesium helps with the detox. So you probably don't need to get a cold or a fever because you're detoxing through the magnesium use. Yes, well, that's one of the, the methodologies. The other one is that magnesium makes our white blood cells more virulent. So it gives them a bigger punch. So you need less uh, of the macrophages and the phagocytes to come and gobble up your invading microbes. You need less of them to get the job done, which means you don't build up so much phlegm. You mightn't even notice that you you're dealing with any bugs because you don't have any. You have to symptoms. take a break. No, that was my my phlegm imitation. All right, we'll be back in a moment on Love Never Dies Radio and Doctor Turndorf. Turn on the love. It's Dr. J.B. Turndorf here. Are you feeling stressed, tense, jumpy, jittery, anxious, or having panic attacks or angry outbursts or disturbed sleep? Are you worried that you or someone you love is going to get sick or even die? 
Are you depressed and feeling hopeless like the world is coming to an end? Or are you suffering aches and pains or stiff muscles, low energy, or falling into self-damaging or addictive behaviors like binging on junk food, the internet, or TV, or abusing drugs or alcohol, or not eating right, or exercising, feeling like, what's the point? If you said yes to any of my questions, you are likely suffering what I call the global PTSD pandemic stress syndrome triggered by the coronavirus pandemic. Don't despair. My energetic system upgrade is your rescue remedy for the panic epidemic that is plaguing our world. The energetic system upgrade has already helped some of today's top leaders. Now you can experience your own energetic system upgrade healing transformation. To find out more and to schedule your session, visit drjamieturndorf.com slash energetic system upgrade. That's drjamieturndorf, T-U-R-N-D-O-R-F dot com slash energetic system upgrade. Love Never Dies is now on the Dream Vision 7 radio network every Wednesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. and 1 a.m. Eastern Time. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, also known as Dr. Love, is the number one international best-selling author of Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased. If you're grieving the loss of a loved one, tune in and find out how to reconnect and heal any unfinished business using Dr. Turndorf's groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique. Visit AskDrLove.com to find out more. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. You're listening to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If you can't stop crying over the bodily loss of a loved one, Dr. Turndorf's number one international bestseller, Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased, will show you how to toss out the tissues and transform your grief into joy using her groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique that enables you to reconnect and even heal unfinished business with those in spirit without the assistance of a medium, channeler, or psychic. Sign up for Dr. Love's free newsletter at AskDrLove.com and receive an exciting gift, a free excerpt of Love Never Dies. And now, back to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Hello again. Welcome back to Love Never Dies Radio on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network and Dr. Turndorf, Turn on the Love on Binge Networks TV. We're talking with Sandy Sanderson about your pain and why it won't go away. Sandy, I was thinking we didn't talk about the vagus nerve and that's linked, right, to the nerve connecting gut brain. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes, and that's associated with headaches a lot of the time. So there are basically two types of headaches. There's the tension headache. So we talked about the squeezing of the calcium and magnesium drops too much calcium moves in and squeezes the vessels, the muscles, the vascular system starts to compress and you get a higher blood pressure. So, so that, that's tension causing uh, a, a perception of pain. Now, how that, how that connects with the vagus nerve is that when the, the muscles, the nerve in the, in the head is uh, run by or governed by the trigeminal nerve, which has three branches and basically is responsible for your jaw and your scalp muscles and how your muscles move. And it's connected with the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve is responsible for your heart rate and your digestion and the motility um, and and an inflammatory response because your immune system sits mostly in the gut. So if you're in fight or flight and you're, you're all revved up with, with fear or panic, your vagus nerve freezes or tenses because it's, it's, it's got to get you ready to, to run. You, you don't feel hungry. You can't digest food in that situation and everything tightens up. And that, connects with that trigeminal nerve and your face muscles tense up as well and your, your jaw might tense up and everything just gets ah, tighter. PMJ. Yes, yes, and you can get locked jaw, lots of things. So 
normally that ha that happens in short bursts the danger is over magnesium moves back in it relaxes the vagus nerve which relaxes the trigeminal nerve and everything goes back to normal under normal conditions if you have enough magnesium but if you don't you can have a suboptimal um, uh, response where you still have some tension left and you don't fully relax the vagus nerve remains tense and that's not good for your microbiome it's not good for your gut digestion it's not good for your stomach if your stomach's not digesting food properly um, you can um, not raise enough stomach acid you might be getting SIBO in the small intestine that's small intestinal bacterial overgrowth causing IBS symptoms and bloating, pain, pain in the gut. <laughs> and GERD, people don't realize the gas yeah. pressure boom, goes up and you've got GERD, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so when you're in fight or flight, the, the blood focuses in your arms and legs because you've got to run, you've got to you know, deal with some danger. And it goes away from the stomach area, which is what you usually you need. You need more blood there to help mastication of your food, to help that digestion process. And so that's why the body says, oh, we need all our resources to run. So move away from that stomach area. And so that then, if you're stressed, your stomach doesn't do its job properly. Exactly. So, so um, where are we up to? I so, just... well, we, I wanted to talk a little bit about the new book, you know, because we only have like, um, if like. Oh, oh, not... I, I was talking about the headaches. Yes. And the other one is migraines and magnesium. Talk about that. But let's talk just for a moment because people need to understand. People will always say to me when I talk about magnesium being the number one, like it's like air, food, water, magnesium. So they say, well, I take it orally, but we only absorb maximum 30%. So, but when you put it on the skin with the electrotransdermal magnesium, you have immediate absorption and you bypass the gut. So if you have malabsorption issues, it goes right in and starts filling up the tank. So I wanted to make sure people understand. I always, you know, I don't sell this. People say, what the heck are you doing, Jamie? You're not a distributor. You're not an affiliate. No, it's a mission for me because I see how epidemic our stress is, which is why I wrote the book. We'll talk a minute in a minute about that. And 1,040 enzymatic functions require magnesium. Most diseases and conditions are magnesium deficiency in disguise. So I'm really on a mission out there to make people understand this is your first line of defense. So where can everybody get the Electra transdermal magnesium? How do they get it from you? So um, you can uh, look on... Um... Amazon in the USA. Um, there are a number of websites, including our own in Australia. You can go direct if you like, electromagnesium.com.au. That's with a K E L E K T R A, magnesium.com.au. So that's the girl's name. You know, Electra was the Greek goddess of the thundercloud. So it's associated with electricity. So just remember electricity. Um, and we have a lot of resources, um, videos, articles, things to read, information about the product. There are different strengths to deal with different needs um, from skin care to muscle care to everything. Um, and all age groups from babies to the elderly and everyone in between sports people. So um, find out you know, what you might need and it varies from person to person. We're all different. Some people might need a thousand milligram a day. Others can get by with three or 400 milligram, but your body decides what it takes up from the skin. You just have to give it enough. And if you're not getting enough results, then it's just not maybe enough magnesium. Just apply more because you can't overdose and you can't really do any harm that way. The skin won't take up more than what it needs at any one time it's a it's a reservoir it's like a dinner plate and you're filling that dinner plate with nutrition and it sits there and the body and in its own time takes up what it needs it's not a drug or a chemical or anything um, and and so that's a way to bypass the digestive system especially if you've been under stress and that's not working quite well um, and also the tablets and powders do have a tendency to cause diarrhea and most ends up in the toilet and not enough gets through the gut wall into the body, into the tissue cells that needs it. You can get trans, you can get um, um, uh, and magnesium by injection uh, where they, they um, give you an IV and they're using this now uh, sometimes in operations where 
where it allows the anesthetist to use less anesthetic because the magnesium makes the anesthetic work better with less quantity, which means that the person has less uh, issues with side effects from the anesthetic. So, but you know, not everyone can have an IV and that's in critical circumstances and acute conditions, so which we want to avoid. So by having a lifestyle which incorporates magnesium every day, you're ensuring your magnesium cellular reserves are kept at optimal levels. So if you are stressed, if you do have to run a marathon, if you stay up all night for some important reason and you really deplete some magnesium that way, you have plenty left over. You're not going to move into a critical situation. You can deal with stress better. It makes you much stronger. You can feel that you cope better with everything. So um, yes, so transdermal magnesium saved my life and, and really helped so many other people. And I am also on a mission. I'm here to spread the word because um, there's nothing better than people being self-empowered, I feel, you know, we really need to know what it is our body needs to live well and healthy, joyfully, to help the brain work better, to help the heart work better. And we experience life much better at the end of the day. Exactly. And, you know, in the book, the new book, if you think you don't have PTSD, think again, I talk about how it was divinely ordained that I was moved to Florida so that we would meet and so this mission, we would join forces in helping the world with this magnesium mission. So, you know, the book is available now for pre-order. The ebook can be pre-ordered in advance and the, um, the um, Kindle and the ebook will be available in the next couple of weeks. I'll, I'll do an email uh, newsletter so everybody will know. And we're going to make a special gift to all my listeners. If you're not on my mailing list, make sure you get on the list at askdrlove.com because we're gonna do a special where you can get the book for 99 cents. It'll be a brief little promotion when the book first launches. So Sandy, I know you had a quick look at the book and you did endorse the book. And um, I yes, I heard through the grapevine that you had some other eminent doctors also endorse it, such as Sherry Tenpenny and Mark Circus. And, and Bernie Siegel, I'm such a fan. And, you know, they're just amazing people. And that's really quality, quality endorsement. Bernie and I funny. feel honored. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'll endorse it. We think alike. That's all he said. He's just, I'll, I know before I even read it, uh, I'll endorse it. So the, the book starts with a test to let you know whether you or someone you love is suffering from PTSD. That's how we begin. Then uh, the next chapter is how PTSD manifests differently in men versus women. Then the third chapter is how do you know if your child or a kid that you know has PTSD because it's different. The way it manifests in children is different than adults. And then I talk in the next chapter about how do you know whether you have panic disorder, anxiety, or PTSD? Because the symptoms are very similar and then there are some differences. So I show you how to know the difference. And then I uh, talk about whether depression is really just a symptom of PTSD, right? And then also we talked today about physical pain. Physical pain and PTSD are really two sides of the same coin. It's one and the same. If you've got pain, you've got PTSD. If you've got PTSD, you've got pain. Then I talk also about addiction. In, is addiction really just PTSD in disguise? And you'll see when you read this chapter, yes, it is. And then, uh, of course, Dr. Love, she loves this chapter. Uh, could PTSD be causing your sagging sex life? <laughs> because it's totally connected. And I explain the pathway where, one, where the PTSD gets you down. Your flagpole flies at half mast, et cetera. You get it. Now, also, Sandy, you suggested to me a week ago, and I was glad you did, that I add a chapter on digestive disturbances and PTSD. So that even though the book was already, you know, getting ready to be printed, um, I added the chapter. And so that's what put us back by a month. And then we talk about the energetic system upgrade. So that's that divinely inspired healing method where I use your electromagnesium as step one in your energetic system upgrade. And I explain how it works 
that's why Sherry Tenpenny endorsed the book because I gave her an energetic system upgrade. And she said that a problem she had been struggling with for her entire adult life was 80% resolved after just one energetic system upgrade. So I'll talk more about the details of the chapters when we get closer to publication, but now pre-order the book. Don't forget, it's important. And then look for your newsletter where I'll give you uh, the free gift of the, the actual soft cover for, is it the soft cover? No, it's gonna be the Kindle book for 99 cents. That's it's really a, really a manual for survival in these times of high levels of stress. Um, people are not coping. And you can see from, from the increase, the exponential increase in suicides and, you know, people are just not coping with that level of stress and they're desperate to look for solutions, defences. I call magnesium a defence strategy, defence against stress, defence against debilitating right. disease defense against pain and it is preventive medicine too you know Absolutely. it's a preventive medicine better than you know you can take a handful of vitamins and supplements and it or you can take this transdermal magnesium and well, get it's food we, it's so we use magnesium chloride salt it's a natural salt produced by nature um and we and once it's dissolved cells can take it up without any further digestion it goes straight in there it works very fast and, and it calms everything down. When you calm down your nervous system, beautiful things happen. Absolutely, absolutely. Did I tell you about the woman, she's an MD. I had a patient who's an MD and her mother is an MD in her late eighties. And her, my patient, the MD said her mother, the 88 year old MD had been bedridden for four years with spinal stenosis pain. This is one of the worst pains. So I said, look, just get this magnesium, the electro transdermal. And because it was so bad, I said, just spray the magnesium spritz, spritz oil. She told me that within four hours, her mother was up and around, out of bed, out of pain, after four years of being bedridden. So, I mean, these are, these are miracles, but it's just miracles only because it's such, when you give the body what it is deficient in, it perks up like a wilting flower. It just says, yes. oh, you know? It's, it's very good to regain motility as well. So a lot of people, you know, with very stiff arthritic fingers find it very useful to um, massage in very high concentrations. And literally with, within minutes, they get a little bit of uh, uh, mobility back um, yeah. in the fingers. And I've had, we used to do shows and expos before COVID hit. <laughs> and and uh, so many people would come and we'd give them demonstrations. Of course, we can't touch people now. But anyway, we'd, we'd massage the hands, the little old ladies with their, you know, arthritic gnarled fingers. And I had um, one mother and daughter come and they they bought some and the daughter rang me two hours later and she said this is a miracle she said I can't believe it my mother's in tears she said she can move her fingers for the first time in years and she hasn't experienced that and she just yeah. wanted me to let you know how thankful she and was it, it, you are the most sincere person I know because this truly is a mission for you born from the heavens and you make yourself so available anyone who purchases from you if anyone has questions of course you can ask me questions but sandy you're available so it's electromagnesium.com.au for australia we have to go now but we'll be we'll be seeing you again very soon all right very nice yes yeah, send me an email there's a contact page and um yeah look forward to the next show all look right forward to the book all right guys see you next time on Love Never right. Dies and Dr. Turndorf, Turn on the Love. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe.
Relax and enjoy. Let life flow.